two of us here. If you watched yesterday's video, you kind of got the sense that we are starting to talk a little bit more about when it comes to the attributes and the nature of God, uh, His attributes, what He is, what He's about, what He does. Uh, yesterday we finished, or yes, finished, started talking about uh, His incommunicable attributes, and we discussed th those are the attributes that, that God doesn't share with us, that we don't see anywhere else in, in nature, in, in humanity, in anything. They are attributes that God alone possesses. Uh, and today we're going to start talking a little bit more about uh, communicable attributes. So those are the attributes that God does have that he does share with us. And you know, Ethan, talking about those communicable and incommunicable attributes of God, one of the things we've been talking about is, or we have talked about how God, you know, we've shown how God has these attributes that are incommunicable. But when we look at the communicable attributes of God that, that we possess, the ones that God has communicated to us, uh, the one thing we've been finding is that those attributes are tainted by sin. So as we look at those things, I think it's important for us to understand what exactly do these attributes look like in our lives. And we thought, well, you know what? In uh, Matthew 21, 16, Christ was talking to a group of people, and he says this. He says, hearest thou what these say? He's talking about children. And Jesus said unto them, ye have, have, ye, have ye never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings? Thou hast perfected praise. And you know, we thought, you know, it'd be kind of neat to look at these, at these communicable attributes that we have from the lives or from the mouths of children. So let's, uh, let's look at these from the lives of children. We've asked a lot of the families in our church if they would uh, put together uh, videos to talk a little bit about these, these uh, from their children's views what these communicable attributes of God look like. So we're going to start out today with Noah. So we'll get Noah and we'll be right back. All right, well, we're with Noah here, and we are discussing with Noah the topic of the goodness of God or and the goodness of man, how a communicable attribute is that man can also be good. So how, how would you define good, or how can you uh, tell us that you are, are you good? Yes. Yes? Okay. How are you good? What things do you do that are good? That's a good way to be good. So, do you ever help her with anything else? I help mommy clean up the house. There you go. Hey, let me ask you even a better question. Is your brother good? Sort of. Sort of. Is there ever times when he's not good? Yes. All right. Well, let me ask you a question about, can I ask you a question about God? The Bible says God is good. Where do you see that God is good? How is God good? Because... People, people in heaven don't sin. They don't sin. Okay, so God's good because he doesn't sin. Okay. Is God ever good to us? Yes. How's he good to us? What did he give you that was good? The Bible. The Bible. Man, that's a really cool thing, isn't it? And we get a chance to know about God, read about God. Let me ask you another question. Is it good that God gave you a mom and a dad? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let me ask you even a better question. Is it good that God gave you a good grandpa? Or a couple of good grandpas? What? That's probably the best thing in the whole world, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Well, let me ask you a question. If, if, if God is good, does that mean that it's okay to take your grandma on a date? That's the most weirdest thing I ever <laughs> well, did you, you did, did that, that though. Did you take grandma on the date? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, those are pretty good. Thank you very much. That was extremely good. Way to go, Homer. All right. <laughs> Matthew, Daddy, get home. Sometimes a kid's perspective is, is interesting to look at in different avenues and different ways and see how they see the world. You know, because really they see the world through a whole different lens. And when we look at, you know, the goodness of God, we, 
we think of how we get our definitions when it comes to these communicable attributes, we get them from God. God defines what they mean and how they how they work in our lives. And so that's one thing that we've tried to teach Noah is or just our kids in general and I I'm sure a lot of our families are the same and is when we display the goodness of God in this example, the goodness of God, we're not only obeying, we're not only being obedient as some of the examples that he gave, but we're also displaying the, the nature of God. We're also uh, projecting to those who are around us, who are seeing us, who are watching our, our actions, our reactions, our behavior, we're also displaying to them the nature and, and the goodness of who God is. And that's really what matters, and that's really the, the purpose behind it. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, in, in all this, too, I want to just say a big thank you to Noah. appreciate him coming in and doing this. Noah's not the kind of guy that likes to get in front of the camera very much, but uh, he did his dad and his grandpa a favor, and we really appreciate him very much. Uh, really looking forward in the days to come, looking at more of these communi communicable gifts of God and looking at them from the standpoint or from the viewpoint of a child. Looking forward to the days coming up and looking forward to hearing from more of our families and more of their kids. So thank you for joining us today. Y'all have a great day and uh, enjoy the Lord and enjoy the day that this day that the Lord has given to us. We'll see you later. Thank you.